Uh, my name is Paul Steinhardt. I'm at Princeton University. The inflation model is an attempt to solve a fundamental problem with the original Big Bang picture. As a, uh, the, the Big Bang is not something we really deeply understand. We have no theory of the Big Bang, but our notion is that it's some random, highly turbulent quantum beginning from nothing to something. And so it would leave a universe which is very random and distorted. So yet we don't observe that's the way the universe looks today. So we need some idea to fix that. So inflation was invented as a fix as a brief period of extremely rapid expansion that would occur after the bang, that whose purpose would be to smooth out those initial highly non -even, uneven distribution of matter and radiation. So uh, I was actually, I, I, my own career in, in cosmology began with the idea of inflation. Uh, I was really attracted by this notion that you could solve these fundamental problems about the universe through some kind of transition, brief transition that would occur over a very short period of time in the early universe. And so originally I was a, a big fan of it, and I, I think it's fair to say that I, I made a number of contributions to constitute the idea today. But in the process, I also learned some things about inflation that, that turned out to be very unattractive. And we assumed that quantum effects played a very minor role. But we discovered over time it's reverse. Quantum effects completely dominate what happens once inflation starts. So that even though you thought you were smoothing the universe, there are also quantum effects that unsmooth it. And the unsmoothing wins out over the smoothing. This inflation that occurred in the very early universe that not only smoothed the universe, but also uh, produced a little, what first of all thought was a small amount of desmoothing that would produce hot spots and cold spots in the early universe. So you should also expect to see, along with this, um, gravitational waves that accompany all those fluctuations that you produced in the distribution of matter and energy. But we don't see those. The Big Bang is this period in which things, quantum physics dominates over classical. Uh, so you might wonder, is it possible to, con uh, to construct a theory of the universe in which you don't have a bang? In, and in which you never have a period in which quantum physics dominates over the classical. That universe is, in terms of an av its average properties, always following deterministic equations, classical equations of motion. And that's the idea that we're pursuing. That instead of a bang, there was a bounce. That the universe underwent a very long period of contraction. It's during this period of contraction that you can smooth and flatten the universe. And quantum fluctuations in this case will produce hot spots and cold spots but not ones that produce a quantum runaway effect. And one of the things I, I find appealing about the bounce idea is that there it has a natural role. If you imagine that the universe didn't just bounce once, but bounced at regular intervals, why would there be one bounce? Why wouldn't it repeat? All the lumpiness and randomness in the, you see, observe in the universe today somehow has to be smoothed out and it, before you get to your next bounce in preparation for the next bounce. Dark energy is a natural mechanism for producing that. It's driven by an energy which is very, very close to zero, just on the edge of going from positive to negative. The fact that it's slightly positive right now means that it is causing this accelerated expansion. But it's also easy to imagine that it's slowly decreasing in its concentration. And if it decreases and goes from slightly positive to slightly negative, that will automatically cause the expansion of the universe to go from expansion, uh, from accelerated expansion to decelerated expansion, and then to turn around and go to contraction. What I remember is that uh, my father used to tell me, uh, you know, bedtime stories like, you know, and you know, sometimes it would be Jack and the Beanstalk, but sometimes it would be the story about a scientific discovery. So I remember his telling me stories about Madame Curie and uh, Louis Pasteur and these stories, and, and, and the stories always, you know, led, led, to the, led to this dramatic moment where there'd be this moment of discovery. And that to me was the really, you know, exciting point. And I just wanted to know if I could ever do anything like that, discover anything new that people didn't know before, which is somehow the strange job of a scientist. Um, and so, yeah, I was hooked.